What's up everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube video. Welcome back to the new series. Uh, I guess it's the off-season series, I haven't really thought of a name. <laughs> Maybe that'll be something by the time this video goes up. This is the first time that I've filmed since getting back from America, which was like three weeks ago now, which is crazy. It's the first time I've seen Andy. Going from seeing someone every single day and being like intimate with someone every day to just zero, it's kind of strange being back behind the lens, but I'm happy we're back. I'm motivated, I'm ready. We've done a few things. I went to Ibiza last week. It was absolutely crazy. Good couple nights out, we met Louis out there, we had an amazing time, that was kind of like my my blow off and my uh, kind of let loose. I still ate exactly where I'm supposed to eat, I still trained, I still did everything I needed to do and this video is going to be all about that, it's going to be all about the off season plan, uh, what I'm starting with, with, with cardio, with my steps, with my food, uh, with my drugs, with my training. And we're going to go through that as we do start to warm up and start to go through this workout and we'll just interchange it as we go um, and give you the full rundown of this off season because we have some great information as where we need to go from here now let's build let's grow it's time to do what we do best let's go in for a chest and back session today. Chest and back. That's like old school Arnold that is. I love those chest back sessions I used to do when I was a kid. I used to Google what did Arnold do and just literally copy it. So I'm, I'm happy to be doing a chest and back. I've done chest and back a few times before in my career or in my bodybuilding career I talk about. I'll probably start with training because it's the first thing that we're going to do that's a little bit weird is chest and back because most people don't pair those two things together now. A big focus for me this season um, is going to be filling up the upper band. Um, I spoke to Tyler Mann in the head judge. He said I want to fill in the upper chest, fill in the upper delts a little bit more. He said my arms are okay but in, 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 in growing my upper chest, in growing my delts, my arms are going to have to kind of fill in that gap as well and just being slightly taller I'm six foot one on a good day maybe just over uh, it takes me a little bit more to fill out so that's going to be the focus of this 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 year um, so we're going to have a push session which is going to be very very upper focused on a monday on tuesday will be a pull focused uh, with no biceps because biceps will put on that first monday with push so it'll be push triceps and biceps pull with no biceps uh, on that third day will be arms and delts so a full kind of uh, more of a dedicated session towards arms and then a little bit more to kind of fill out those upper delts on thursday is going to be a rest and then on friday which is today we've got the upper session slash chest and back because we want to touch that chest again back being something that is uh, a strong point of mine we can we can take a little bit more volume away from that which is why we're starting our chest because uh, we want to prioritize that um, and then on the, the Saturday it's going to be legs because I don't need to hit my legs too often I don't need to really grow them so I'd much rather take that energy and that focus away from the legs and put it into these upper parts on this day we'll also hit arms again so arms hit, get hit three times a week chest gets hit two to three times a week back get hit twice a week legs just once a week that is my training setup and that will be smooth throughout so Thursdays and Sundays is rest days they probably won't change for the next five to six weeks So one thing that we will be doing with uh, training for the foreseeable future, 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 is basically working from a minimum effective volume MEV to an MRV, a maximum recoverable volume. 
And this essentially just means doing absolutely the bare minimum that you need to pretty much maintain or, or, or minimally grow, however much that may be for you. I think over the, the nine to 10 years I've been lifting, I'm pretty good at knowing what that is for me it, on my different body parts. It's gonna be different for everyone. Um, but with the coach, obviously, and with long-term progress, you can, you can work that out. And then I'm gonna be pushing that up the maximum that I can recover from. Now that is also gonna change. And it's also gonna be a sliding scale. There may be a point where we go over the scale and I'm not recovering anymore. And that'll be our kickback to remove that volume back. So for example, let's say we start at nine sets a week on arms. That's really easy, we're growing. We're, pro we're progressing, everything's going up. We move up to 18 sets over six weeks. And at the end of it, you're not progressing. Those sets aren't progressing. You're not actually adding more volume. Well, then you know you probably overshot it a little bit. So obviously we'll go nine to 12 to 15, very, very slowly over that six to eight week period. Once we accumulate that fatigue, we'll deload, we'll rest, and we'll start again. So hopefully stronger and work up again. We'll do a full video hopefully on that. Oh, it's getting heavy. Those are guys who followed the off-season chronicles last year. I think we did six, maybe even five plates and two 25 plates. That's just five plates, so I'm gonna have to try six out of pure ego, but let's see what happens. I don't know where to put my feet, I don't know where to put my shoulders. <laughs> oh God, that's the, uh, the thing you gotta remember when you're doing these new movements for the first time. Your body's like, I say for the first time, obviously I've done it before, like I'm gonna be good at a shoulder press, but when you're trying to bury into a new movement pattern, it's gonna take time. Your body's gonna find that perfect form like you know, three, four weeks in, so. If you feel shaky the first time, that's pretty normal. Oh god. That was rubbish. So the next part, drugs. What am I doing with my drugs? So first of all, um, I've come off a competition prep, so I was off a blast. So my first port of call was to remove everything that I needed to remove, which is pretty much every single thing that I was taking except for T3 and T4. Why didn't I take out T3 and T4? Because I took out Clen, I took out your Himbine, I took out Growth Hormone, I took out all of the anabolics, which would have a little bit of a metabolic fluctuation. I wanted to just keep a little bit of baseline T3, T4 in there so that I didn't have a complete crash and just blow up. So that's kind of what I did. I took out all injections, no testosterone, no orals for two weeks. Why? Because it just brings that plasma level of anabolic androgenic steroids down quickly as possible. I could have left it three weeks maybe, but I did it at two weeks. I then started to administer my TRT dose, which for me is about 150 milligrams, which hits me right on the top end of the scale, which is where I was naturally. Um, I didn't bring in growth hormone or anything. After two weeks, um, bringing in that TRT, I then dropped up T3, kept in T4, um, at T4 at 150 micrograms to kind of keep that baseline thyroid axis going. I'm then gonna get blood work done at week four, which is last week, so I have blood work coming up tomorrow. I will then do a full blood panel, see where I sit, how long I need to hormonally sit, how long my thyroid, how, how well my thyroid is doing. I will then pull out T4 accordingly. I will then be at 150 milligrams of TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. I will then start to bring in growth hormone at two IUs, and I will taper that up to three IUs, and that'll be my baseline TRT, HRT dose. Um, why do I wait a little bit of time for growth hormone? Because I just don't want to fluctuate the water balance too much within that first couple of weeks when you're highly at like at risk to it because that water balance is so so varying in that first couple of weeks. Oh. One thing I notice is my strength isn't so bad. Just my endurance is gone. And that's that week five of TRT I've really noticed that you guys might not notice it, but I noticed a lack of pop, the lack of fullness. Still getting a decent pump, which is nice, but that's obviously because I'm reversing up from food, but definitely feeling uh, on the more natural side.
the other thing we can talk about food food people like food don't they so I've been pretty I've been pretty fucking meticulous for the first time in my life uh, a little bit of like enforced anxiety of like getting a little bit chubby um, but also just a little bit probably a little bit of anxiety of just fucking up my off season I did that last year maybe a little bit more warranted if that's even a thing I want my pro card I was like fuck this I'm gonna do what I want and I ate whatever I wanted for three weeks and I uh, put on like 15 kilos pretty quickly. I was like 97. I got to like 112 very, very quickly. That's five kilos heavier than I am now. Did it in about a week. This is like six weeks post, nearly six weeks post. Um, and it completely fucked me because I started my off season kind of seven weeks after that and I had no appetite. I literally was just like, I'm, just, I'm so sick of food because I ate whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted for like two months straight and completely, completely fucked up my off season. I wouldn't say fucked up, I still got it done just but it was horrible i hated eating from day one and i had to go do that for 16 weeks this year i'm not doing that this year i'm professional this year i've got i've got unfinished business i didn't achieve what i wanted to i've got to go back to the drawing board and look at myself in the mirror and think did you do what you did what you could have done last year no i didn't this year i will this year i did so we controlled food really really well um i was at like 2,000 calories <laughs> immediately went to 2.8 was losing weight went to 3.2 was losing weight went to 3.5 held weight um and then i've been kind of at 3.5 on training days and about 3.3 on non-training day since, and we just pushed to 3.7 and 3.5. So just gone up another 200 calories like four days ago. And I've stuck to it. I've stuck to it the whole way. I've had maybe two meals, two days where I had whatever I wanted, and they were post-rave in Ibiza. So being post-rave, I was like back in the 105s. So I kind of ate what I wanted for the day. Did that twice, I did that twice in five weeks. That's all I needed. Um, I'm done, I'm ready, for, I'm ready to grow. So that's what we're here to do. That's what we're doing in terms of food. So my forearms are completely the limiting factor there. So I've fucked that one up, haven't I? Make sure you get yourself some one of my straps at all times. One of my shot. We'll fix that for next time.
<coughs> so that's about, <clears throat> oh, my voice is gone. That's about five weeks, five weeks post-show. So holding it pretty well. Still pretty happy with kind of where we're at, sitting that far post-show, considering how quickly things can go west. <laughs> We've done all right considering a big, big focus of this year. Obviously, it's going to be bringing in this midsection a lot more, a lot more density to it. And that's just going to come from trunk training frequency. That's all we're going to do, increase that frequency. Um, I will do like a specific video on that a little bit later down the line, how I'm going to specifically bring that up, um, as well as not get so fat in the off season. Had to lose so much uh, body weight this prep. Literally want to take off at least 10 kilos off that. I don't think we need to do that much. So, you know, the, the, the push up will be much more conservative, much more lean, and we'll stay conservative throughout. So, guys, we're back. Nearly, you can hear in the voice, we're nearly there. Um, so we'll see you guys in the next video. It's off-season time. <laughs>